Okay, so what I want to go over today, we gave you this warm-up paper that has 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3 day 2 on it. So what I want to focus on right now is reviewing the domain. This stuff that I think is the hardest section, in my opinion, of the whole unit. So when we're talking about this, so remember we're talking about the domain, it's the x values. So we have to find the limitations for the x values. There are really two big sins that we're trying to figure out here. Sin number one is you never want to divide by zero. So I always want to look and see, do I have a fraction? Not necessarily just a fraction, but a fraction that has an x in the denominator, okay? And rule number two, sin number two that you never want to commit, is you never want to divide by, excuse me, you never want to take a square root of a negative. Now, this is Papa 2. So when we talk about square roots, it's more than just square roots. It's any even root, like a fourth root or a sixth root. Because if you go to your calculator and you tried to take a square root of a negative number, it's going to tell you a domain error. If you try to take a fourth, oopsie, clear that out. If I try to take a fourth root of a number, it's going to tell me, oh my goodness, I have to make it a negative. If I try to take a fourth root of a negative number, it's going to tell me a domain error. You can take cubed roots and odd roots of negatives, you just can't take even roots of negatives, okay? Now there's some special situations where you might have a negative exponent, we'll turn the negative exponent into a fraction and then deal with these two rules. Sometimes you have a radical in the denominator, that's what I call double trouble. So when that happens, you have to put the rules together to figure it out. Let's walk through this. So at first glance, you look, do you see any x's in a denominator? Nope. Do you see any radicals that are even? Nope. So this is all real numbers. So I can say negative 00 to positive 00 in buzz because it's negative infinity to positive infinity. There are no limitations on that. Now I look at this next one. So at first glance, you think, oh, there's no limitations because I don't see a fraction or a radical. But you see that negative exponent? You have to write it as a fraction first. So the 3 doesn't move, and the x plus 4 doesn't need to move, but the x squared needs to go to the denominator because that's what a negative exponent is. Now, all of a sudden, I have to pay attention to this sin. I could be dividing by 0. So sometimes I scribble out the numerator because I'm done with it. Once I'm done with it, I don't want to look at it. It might be distracting. I have to just say, hey, this is not allowed to be zero. So if x squared were equal to zero, life would be over. So x cannot be zero. So now understanding what the domain is one issue and then being able to write it in set notation is another. The way I write it in set notation is first I put it in a number line. So at the number zero, there is a gaping hole. It cannot be zero. It can be before zero forever and after zero forever, but it cannot be zero. So I run my hand across this and I go, all right, this baby starts at negative forever. It goes up to zero. Then it starts again on the other side of zero and goes forever. Okay, so it is not including zero. That's why this is a soft bracket, a parenthesis. And infinities, negative or positive infinity, always have a soft bracket. So I would write negative o o, then zero, then a little u, a zero, and a o o, if I was typing that into bus. All right, look at problem number three. Now, I don't see a fraction, but I do see an even root. So remember when there's nothing there in the square root, that is a two. All right, so I can't take a square root of a negative. This is the sin I'm paying attention to here. So I know 2x plus 5, it can be 0, but it's got to be 0 or bigger. So I write an inequality, and then I solve this. 2x is greater than or equal to negative 5, so x had better be bigger than or equal to negative 5 halves. So the, now I have said what the limitation of my domain is. Now I'm going to turn it into set notation. I turn it into set notation by making a number line and realizing, hey, 
is greater than or equal to. So here we go. It includes that and it's greater than going this way. So when I'm looking at this, I go along and it starts at negative five halves. So it includes that because it's a filled in or an equal sign. So starting at negative five halves and going forever. So you might write that as negative five halves comma O O. That's how you would type that into buzz. All right, moving along. So when I look at this one, I see a fraction and I have a negative exponent. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this so that it has, um, it, I get rid of the negative exponent. The 3x doesn't need to move. That whole group, that whole thing, x plus 3 goes to the denominator, and it's multiplied by that x minus 5. So step 1 is going to be getting rid of the negative exponent. Now I look for my sins. There's not a radical, but there is a fraction. So I'm going to go, okay, the junk in the denominator can't be equal to zero. So if two things are multiplied by each other in the parentheses, you set each of those equal to zero. So x plus three is zero. So x can't be negative three. x minus five equals zero. So x can't be equal to five. So now I have a lot going on. I have two things here. So I'm gonna start by using my number line. To turn it into set notation, it helps so much if I can write it on a number line. So there's something going on at negative three and something going on at five. It's not allowed to be those things, but it can be everything else. The stuff on the left forever, stuff in the middle, and the stuff going to the right forever. So how do I write that? I run my hand along. It starts at negative forever. It goes up to negative three. It goes from negative 3 to 5, and then it goes from 5 to forever. Well, that's a good one, right? Okay, now let's look at this next one. So see this 3 right here? That is not even, right? So my limitations only apply to even roots. So this is all real numbers. So negative infinity to positive infinity or negative OO to positive OO. That's all. Okay, our last one. So I've got double trouble going on here. I have a radical in the denominator. So you don't care about the numerator when we're trying to figure out what the domain is here. So I have to take the stuff in the denominator. Not only can it not be zero, but it can't be negative. So normally, if it's negative, I say, if it can't be negative, I say it's gotta be greater than or equal to zero, like I did here, but it can't equal zero. So all I'm gonna do here is make it greater than zero, the denominator. So x plus one is greater than zero, so x is greater than negative one. That's it. As long as x is bigger than negative one, this is okay. So let's turn this into set notation. Something's going on at the negative one. That's an open circle because it does not include that. Think about it. If I plugged in negative one into here, I would have negative one plus one is zero. The square root of zero, which is zero, and I would be divided by zero. And we're not those kind of people. We don't do that. So I'm going to run my hand along this. It starts at negative one, and it goes on forever. It's only this part right here. So you would say negative one, and then your OO. So type that into bus. Hope this has helped you with a little review of 0 to 2.